Okay, we retain a really quick integral from the MIT integration B2006. This is problem 30. We have the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of arcsine cosine x dx. Okay, for my first step on this, there's a really nice formula that's going to help us with this. It just goes, if we have arcsine of some variable, let's say y, plus arc cosine of y, this is just going to be pi over 2. And basically the intuition on this is if you just look at our triangle, our right triangle, well, of course, we've got a 90 degree angle here. The sum of the angles of a triangle need to equal 180 degrees. So if this angle is 90, then we know that T plus alpha is just going to be 90 as well. And we can express that as pi over 2. Well, this right here is not quite the same thing as this formula right here. Well, if you did something like set arc sine of y equal to T, and then you filled out your triangle and solve for alpha, you find that alpha is cosine of y. So really with the triangle, you just quickly can go from here to here. But now in order to use this, I'm just going to rearrange this formula a little bit. And what we can do is solve for this. We'll solve for arc sine of y just divide just by subtracting off this term. We get this is going to be equal to pi over 2 minus our cosine of y. And then using this, it doesn't really matter what our y is. So we can just have our y be this cosine of x. So we can then say that arc sine of cosine x is going to be just equal to pi over 2 minus our cosine of cosine of x. So let's just take this formula here and plug it into our integral and continue. But now from here, we're gonna get some nice simplification on this piece right here. Now you have to be a little careful with this. We have to look at our bounds because our bounds are just going from zero to pi over two. So this is just gonna be the first quadrant. So everything works out nice and this value reduces to x. If you had different bounds, you have to be careful with it. You could look at a graph and see where it changes. But for this example, this whole thing becomes just x. But now that we have this simplified, pi over 2 is just a constant, so we can just use power rule on this. So I'll go ahead and integrate. So for the first term, we're going to have pi over 2 times x. And for the next one, power rule on this, x squared over 2. And we just need to evaluate from 0 to pi over 2. But when we plug 0 in here, everything's going to be 0, so that's going away. So we just need to evaluate pi over 2. So for this first piece, we're going to get pi squared over 4. And then plugging pi over 2 in here, we're going to get pi squared over 4 divided by 2 gives me pi squared over 8. Get a common denominator on this. We're going to have, for the first one, 2 pi squared over 8 minus pi squared of 8. And so for my final solution of this, we just get pi squared over 8. Okay, there you have it. Good quick problem from MIT 2006. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.